Hello, this is Katherine Dubberly, the Answer Lady. Today's subject is the row counters on Studio Singer knitting machines. Jack is going to show you how they work and how to troubleshoot one if it should misbehave. Alright, let's talk about taking everything off of here. We've got these little plastic knobs that come off. And then we've got a screw here and a screw here. And then we're going to lift this cover off. Set it out of the way. And you, the reason we do that, if you'll notice the lip that it covers here for the piece that we want to get off next. This piece only has a screw all the way to the left hand side of the bed. This end is held by the piece we just took off. Right. And we've removed these knobs. They just slide off. Yeah, they just slip right off. And what we're going to do is we have it work it around this lever and there's another lever on the other end and it kind of helps if you keep a finger on either one. You wiggle it up. Yeah, you want this to stay in an upright position and this to stay in an upright position and you see right. they'll stay there moment momentarily. Your hand blocked it, right. but that's what we're keeping upright? Right, and it goes in that slot. Okay. So you just kind of either balance it in the middle like I do or keep a finger on that and the one on the other side and that gets it out. Now here's the problem we're looking for is this flipper that's the row counter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this row counter out of the way. There's a screw right in the back just to the left of that center part. When you look down this is what you're going to see. You're going to see there the screw go. and two holes making a little triangular area. Now here's the caution you see you've got three holes here. This is threaded, this is threaded, this is a retention boss. And you, if you're not careful, you'll think, oh, that little boss goes in one of these holes. It does not. It goes in this hole. So you see you have two positions for the boss and two positions for the screw. And you don't see that when you look down on it. So when you pull it up, Remember which screw, which hole that screw came out of, and know that this is the position. You could mark it with a grease pencil. You could, or you could just look underneath and see there's a definite mark right here where that little stob sits because it's two levels and it's got a little black ring on it. Okay, Alright, what our friend has said is that when the row counter gets depressed this way, it does spring back. But when it gets depressed this way, it wants to not spring back but stay tucked Well, in. actually, she says it seems to retract into here. The picture shows it, so it's shy. It's hiding in the hole. Okay. Let's talk about what's going on. Look at this cam leader. When I move it in either direction, this moves in the same direction. It's rotating this knob no matter which direction we go in. So this is a load spring here. Look right here and you'll also see this is a spring. Alright? And what you cannot see, and I'm going to try to indicate the area, is back behind this piece. We can't see through your hand. Okay. Behind what? This piece. Okay. Which is, this is a cam affixed to this flipper. And if you'll notice, there's a top cam, there's a bottom cam, and there's a side cam on the same level. And if you'll notice, that's what's pushing this piece back. So this gray piece of plastic, this cam tower, has its own spring and it comes in from the back and holds this in a central position. Now what I suspect is See how I can lift that cam tower off of its shaft? We can see that, yeah. It just sits there. And what I think is, see here's the spring. The row counter lever is a part of this cam tower. And if you'll notice, it just sits on this little brass stop. What, w what my suspicion is, since it wants to go back inside, see that's stationary. It can't go anything. I think that probably there's a crack in this cam tower that's letting it slide past that brass rod. Possibly from what I'm seeing, the brass rod could be loose, but I don't think it would work at all 
if that were the case. I think what it is, is you will find that that cam tower has got a crack. And did you say that there could be a broken spring also? Uh, I said that was a possibility, but since one spring controls the lever in both directions, it would not work at all in either direction. It would go in and stay like that and not come back out, but it would also go in and stay if it went in this direction and not come back out. And why, if the cam tower was cracked, would it work in one direction but not the other? Because of the position of these cam lobes. It's asymmetrical. Right. In other words, watch this piece right here. It's being pushed in. This is being pushed in by one of the cams when it goes in that direction. But it's also being pushed in by a cam on the other side. So what you've got is a cam here mm -hmm. that's much smaller than the cam on this side because this is not centered. If our knitter wants to get into it, and it's very easy, you showed us how to release it, the part she needs to replace are there. Is this cam tower. Mm -hmm. Now, here's, here's the wrinkle. You have to remove this circlip and that circlip, and there's a circlip right here to let this whole mechanism that I'm pointing to rise up. And of course it's spring loaded here. You're probably going to have to take this screw out and remove this retention plate. But to lift that up out of there, you're going to have to release the spring that controls this from the back side. And it's probably going to be released underneath there. If you don't feel comfortable working with these circlips and there's a spring underneath this circlip right here, and if you if things going sproing are a bother to you, don't go in there. If you feel confident that you can look at it, draw yourself a picture, or get someone to film it as you go, yes, this piece will come right out. It's only held by the spring in the back in the center. But I would suspect that there's a damage to this since this is the soft composite piece and that's brass. And if the spring were gone, it would not load in either direction. It would just, whenever you moved it, it would stay in the direction you moved it in. But it would not also be running your row counter properly. 